Today we're out in the forest with what I think is the best sedan available in the US for 2023. This is the all new 7th generation BMW 7 Series. Hopefully you'll all pardon my voice, I am recovering from a sinus infection and it has been raining for the last seven days straight here, so if we're interrupted by rain or fog, that's just how it's going to be in this video. Let me know what you think of the design of the 7 Series down there in the comment section. The last few generations have certainly been controversial, from the bengal butt in the back, which is no longer there, to this big toothy grill up front. I have to admit though, I don't mind this look, even in this sort of panda theme here where we have the white and the black and then white below. It is the, the look that's really gonna accentuate this design the most. However, this comes across as more style forward, more adventurous, and certainly actually a bit squarer than the jelly bean-like theme we find at Mercedes. And I think not quite as sedate and maybe boring as an Audi A8. We have full LED headlights up front, but they're divorced from these accent lights on top. This gives me a little bit of modern Hyundai vibe, actually. They were one of the first companies to do this split headlamp look, also the original Jeep Cherokee uh, when it went to a unibody construction. People didn't like it there. Let me know what you think about that here. Active grill shutters there, and again, a relatively upright profile. As you'd expect in a luxury sedan, we have a really long hood up front, but I like the way that the hood is really just a lid on top of the front end. This is a difficult engineering thing to achieve because the alignment of all the components is essential to get the quarter panel, the bumper section that really wraps up top, and the hood to all align right. And I think this looks fantastic. Also fantastic is the size of the 7 Series and therefore its presence as well. This is over 212 inches long nine inches longer than a BMW X7, making this the biggest BMW sold in North America, unless of course you start talking about a Rolls Royce, which is also manufactured by BMW. But that's a topic for a different video. This is about two inches longer than a Chevy Tahoe, and one of the things that I really like about sedans in this category is that they still have a real back seat. You'll notice how boxy the back end is right in this area. The roof line doesn't start dropping until about there. That gives us more headroom in the back and therefore a more comfortable seat for adults. We also, of course, have a pretty big trunk in the rear. How does this stack up against the long-term rival from Mercedes? Well, you will certainly notice that the Mercedes has a more raked roof line in this area. That's something that I have complained about in this generation. And certain versions are a little bit longer. If you got, for instance, an S-Class Maybach, it would be about 215 inches long, and Mercedes has stretched that sedan out to over 230 inches in the past. So who knows, one of those models might return at some point. And that's mainly because Mercedes does not have a Rolls-Royce-like counterpart and with BMW, if you want to go to the next level, they absolutely would not mind if you went out and bought a Rolls Royce instead. As adventurous as you might find the front end styling, the rear end styling is certainly not controversial in this generation. We have a tiny lip spoiler right there on top of the trunk lid, full LED tail lights, no amber turn signals, which does make me sad, but the turn signals do pulsate, which is kind of a cool feature. Obviously, big, bold exhaust tips down there at the bottom because we are in the 760i. As you'd expect out of a flagship, there are a variety of different engines under the hood of the BMW 7 Series. The 740i for $95,700 starts with one of BMW's bread and butter inline six engines. That three liter engine produces 375 horsepower and has a mild hybrid system mated to its standard. As does this optional engine here. It's a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, not a six liter V12. This will start at $116,400, so better start saving your pennies now. This engine produces 536 horsepower, and it's the only way to get all-wheel drive in your 7 Series. So if you want all-wheel drive, just cross that 3-liter turbo off the list. Coming a little bit later, there's also going to be a plug-in hybrid model, although I don't have any information about that. But the BMW 7 Series that I'm really interested to drive is the new i7. It's an all-electric model with over 300 miles of range and over 500 horsepower. And yes, it is essentially an electric 7 Series because BMW decided to go about things a little bit differently than Mercedes. On the Mercedes side of things, we have the very round S-Class and the decidedly egg-shaped EQS, two very different vehicles that share almost nothing with one another. Over here on the BMW side, we have essentially an electric 7 Series, a gasoline 7 Series, and later there's going to be a plug-in hybrid 7 Series jammed right in between. There are certainly advantages and disadvantages to both of these different directions that the manufacturers went. 
I prefer the style of the Electric 7 Series, the i7, and I also appreciate the fact that basically everything you're gonna see in this video, you can get in the electric model, and for some reason, we don't find that in the S-Class to EQS transition. An Uber luxury car would be incomplete without an Uber luxurious cabin, so of course we find one in the 7 Series. Legroom and headroom are very generous up front. I have about two inches of legroom left, and the seat is not quite all the way down. It of course offers massage, a million different ways of adjustment, powered tilt telescopic steering column, and the front passenger seat has the exact same range of motion as the driver's seat. But one of the coolest features in here has to be the powered doors. All four of them power open, and power closed. And I don't even have to touch the door, I just have to put my foot on the brake pedal and the driver's door just closes for me. Also pretty darn cool, the driver's door opens for me as well. I just press the button on the dashboard and I don't even have to push it. And no, you don't have to worry about it in parking lots. A key component to this system is the ultrasonic sensor that's integrated into every door handle. This way the car knows exactly how far this door is from the car next to you. That's how it manages not to hit anything. In many ways, the back seat is where this vehicle really shines. This front seat's comfortably adjusted for me at six feet tall. You can say I have quite a lot of legroom left. And more importantly, gobs and gobs of headroom. If I put my head back here to the headrest, I still have about an inch and a half of headroom left. On paper, it doesn't look like the 7 Series is that much larger or larger at all versus most of the competition. But in reality, this back seat is way, way more comfortable, especially versus something like the Lexus LS. It doesn't have a lot of headroom in the rear. I've always thought that was weird for a vehicle that is so focused on back seat comfort. A big sedan would be nothing without a big trunk, so we find just over 19 cubic feet of storage space back here. That's on par with some small crossovers, and it's nice and square with a low load-in height. You actually can fit four people and their luggage in here pretty easily, I know, because I ended up doing that this week coming back from the Hummer EV drive event in Sonoma County. I was driving back through the airport area, so I just dropped off three of the journalists and all of their gear, camera gear, luggage, etc. Everybody's stuff fit in here just fine, even though I had two bags this size because, of course, one was for clothes and the other one was for camera gear. Now, on the downside, this is not quite tall enough to fit this bag in this upright position, and you should know there's no spare tire under the floor. Let's start our interior tour back here in the back seat of the 7 Series because we should talk about this enormous LCD right here in the back first. This is a touchscreen LCD, so it's not just a static display, which is kind of cool. And you can do things like adjust the angle of the display. You can have it go full screen if you want to, if your media source supports that. It also has an HDMI input and an integrated Amazon Fire TV in this display. This is over 30 inches. It is absolutely enormous, but as we'll talk about in a bit, there is just one little problem from a driver's perspective for this display being so big. As you'd expect, we have sunshades on the side doors, lots of high quality materials back here. And what you might not expect are things like these touchscreen LCDs integrated into the side doors. You can use the door touch screen to control the display. If you don't want to reach out and touch it, you can adjust its angle, things like that there. You can also control the Amazon Fire TV, your telephone, the blinds, the seats, the lighting back here, and even certain vehicle modes. So for instance, I can choose, say, the expressive mode or the personal mode or the digital art mode. And what's interesting about these modes is that as you change the mode in the rear, it actually changes the mode on the instrument cluster and the LCD infotainment system up front. It also changes the ambient lighting scheme on the dashboard and around the vehicle. We'll take a look at that in a bit. And yes, even the ambient lighting that is integrated into the sunroof itself. You'll also use the door touchscreens to control the rear climate control zones and the heated and ventilated seats. And let's not forget about the controls for the power rear seats or, of course, the massage feature back here as well. If you're on the right side of the back, you can also control the front passenger seats. That way you can get it out of the way. And for the ultimate in relaxation, that front seat goes ridiculously close to the dashboard. A tiny footrest pops up from its back. We, of course, get the extending ottoman right there, and that seat reclines just about as far as you might expect. Also, some tiny little pillows back there, which is a nice touch. One thing that's also interesting is this rear window shade. You really can't see out of it, and that's quite different than the side shades, which just block some of the light. And one last thing back here, a Qi wireless charging mat for the rear passengers and two big cup holders. What's the funky door on the front seat backs for? Well, if you don't have enough screens back here already, you can dock an iPad holder in there, and then you can plug it into charge using that USB-C port. Before we get to the rest, you might be wondering, what do you do about a vehicle with so many power doors? Well, there is an option to close all the doors in case, you know, you're too lazy to walk around for that. 
I should have said this earlier, but clearly not everything you see in here is going to be found in the base 7 series, but I really love the attention to detail. You can see around this sunshade for that large panoramic moonroof right there that everything is really tailored very nicely. This is one of those faux suede headliners. You can see all the seams and everything are done very, very well. Lots of extremely high quality materials in here. Lots of metal speaker grills all over the place, like right there just above the driver and front passenger's heads. Now, while we're up here, we should talk about that theater screen. You will notice there is a tiny bit of a problem from the driver's perspective. If I try and put this camera over here to you know, where you might be looking to try and see out the back, you cannot see a darn thing. And it doesn't matter whether the theater screen is up or down if you're using the rear sun blind, because as you can see, you can't really see out that sun blind either. And what's weird is that BMW does not give this a digital rear view mirror, so there's no LCD right there. From this angle, you can see the HDMI input and the USB port on the back of the screen. The screen does slide forward and backward, but when it's in place like this, you can't move the front seats very far back. This is actually as far as it will let that front seat go, and it will give you warning messages if you try and move it around. You can control the screen either via all those different touchscreen interfaces or via a touch button right up here, and then it folds back into the ceiling right like that. But as you can see, still not a view out the rear with that rear sunshade. Moving down from the ceiling, we have those big cushy headrests. Oddly enough, no height adjustable shoulder belts for the front passengers. That's something that we've seen in a lot of BMW models recently. These front seats are very cushy, very thickly padded. They're also heated and ventilated. And of course, very, very adjustable. You can see the extending thigh cushion segment of that seat right there. Moving over to the front doors, you see the start of this really extravagant ambient lighting setup that BMW has gone with. I am a little bit torn about this during the day, but I absolutely love it at night, and I think that this design is more interesting than what we see in the current Mercedes product. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section. Big thing to know is that during the day, you'll see we get all these reflections. That's because this is basically a plastic section of the dashboard. Kind of hear it tapping there. It is backlit with a multi-module LED array. And then inserted into it are lots of touchscreen controls. So you can see the touchscreen controls for the memory seats for the passenger over there, some seat options, door lock and unlock button, power button for that uh, door over there, and then in between here we actually get the air vent. This is the air vent flow control. Yes, I did say air vent. In fact, that happens all across the dashboard. The air vents are hidden inside this slim area here. You'll notice this little zero one control with the green dot. That is the flow control for that air vent. You then move the air around using this little digital control down here, and then air comes out the top and air comes out the bottom and how it blends together dictates how it swirls around the interior. We then have some additional touch modules right here in the middle section of the dashboard. But I digress. Let's get back to the front doors. Lots of metal speaker grill going on there, as you can see in a really intricate pattern. Big storage area down there at the bottom of the door. You can see the backup mechanical door release right down there at the bottom, and then the button to open the door normally. If you want the door to just fling itself open, that's the button up there. So lots of different ways to even open and close the door in here. Up at the top of the dashboard, we have lots of soft touch and stitched materials, full stitch dashboard right there, and then big LCDs running right across the dashboard. For me at least, the layout of these screens is a little bit less controversial than the big displays that we find in the S-Class and the EQS. Let me know what you think about that. They sort of float on the dashboard, so they definitely have that really minimalist theme there, and it debulks the dashboard by pushing the rest of the dash quite far away. Now let's get back to the ambient lighting. Again, there is a multi-module LED array behind this plastic section of the dashboard, and it will change based on the drive mode you select. So if I go up here to this screen, and I, for instance, choose expressive, you'll notice that the color scheme changes. If I were to go back and choose a different drive mode, say, uh, of course, sport mode, it will turn red, as you can see right there. As you'd expect for a vehicle with this price category, it doesn't just change colors, there are also animations involved here. So if I click the efficient mode, you'll see that the color is going to go away, and then it's going to come back with that blue band across the dashboard, and then flash back with that sort of a tan band right there. In most of the modes, the colors are static, but in some of the drive modes, like the one that we're in here, you can see the color slowly rotates around like it's on a color wheel. And in some of the colors, it's really obvious that there are two 3D shapes going on with this module, one on the outside and then one underneath. So it really gives you an impression of depth. Now let's move back to the center console here. Again, that big screen front and center there, touch controls below, Qi wireless charging mat below that. I had no problem charging an iPhone with a thicker case on it. 
These are the cup holders here with individual little covers for them that slide away like that. Moving back from there, we have the latest BMW toggle controls with crystal knobbies on them, start stop button there, toggle shifter, auto brake hold, touch controls for the iDrive system, home button there, media, telephone, nav, etc. Big, large rotary knob there, volume controls. This is the drive mode selector. Well, it's really just my modes. It's not really drive mode because the only drive mode, I guess you could say, is sport mode in this system. We have a bifold center armrest with a reasonable amount of storage inside for a rear wheel drive vehicle. Over on the driver's side, we have a slightly smaller non-touch LCD. You can see these little blinking lights here. Those are part of the driver monitoring system. They're not visible to the naked eye. The camera can see them, but you won't be able to. This system is highly configurable, just as we find in other vehicles with BMW's iDrive 8 system, including a layout mode where you can actually get turn-by-turn -turn mapping directions from CarPlay. This is one of the very few vehicles that supports multi-screen CarPlay, but only Apple Maps will show up in this area right here. So this navigation is also that navigation right there. It's just being displayed on this screen. Apple supports up to three different displays. At the moment, this is the most display you can get. It does offer you, however, the ability to say use Waze over here and Apple Maps over there or listen to your tunes over here and something different over there. BMW gives us a leather wrapped airbag cover, big BMW logo right there in the middle, flat bottom to the steering wheel, big sport grips up top, paddle shifters on the back, down on the left, up on the right. This is also a boost mode paddle over there. Controls for the adaptive cruise control over here, along with the aggressive lane centering program. And then these controls are for the infotainment system, as well as controlling that multifunction cluster there. And of course, the full color heads up display. Rather unfortunately, the rain has started again and it's expected to continue for another seven days, but I was able to zero to 60 test this during a very brief break in the rain earlier. And thanks to the all wheel drive system, this went zero to 60 just as fast as you might expect out of a modern BMW. Four seconds, zero to 60, definitely beating BMW's estimate. That's something that we've come to expect from them. The moment we have a BMW that is somehow slower than their zero to 60, that really would be groundbreaking. But this as quick as you'd expect. Also, stops very, very short. I got 110 feet from 60 miles an hour back to zero, even though it was a fairly damp road surface. This performs exceptionally well, and handling is fantastic as well. This is the kind of vehicle where you are driving down the road as fast as you feel comfortable, then you look down and realize, wow, you were actually going a lot faster than you really thought you were comfortable going on that same road because the handling is impeccable. That's thanks to the suspension design, the sound isolation of the vehicle, which really makes it feel like you're not going that fast, and of course, the four corner steering. The rear wheels will help this turn tighter and they help improve steering ability on roads like this. It really gives this an added level of confidence that you don't find in something like a BMW 5 Series. It also leads to kind of an unusual feeling when you're going around some of these corners and the rear end is steering along with you, sometimes it feels like you're power sliding at really low speeds. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey, I've read some things where people didn't like the tuning of the 7 Series suspension. They thought that it was a little bit too isolated, the steering is too numb, it sort of floats and wobbles out on the road when you tweak the steering wheel like that. All of that is absolutely true. So if you are looking for the sharpest handling entry, you're probably gonna have to wait till we find an Alpina version of this, or you're gonna want an AMG version of the S-Class. That's not the mission of this 7 Series, including the 760. This is designed to be an incredibly fast and incredibly well handling, very comfortable sedan. And I am just fine with that. Sure, it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly what the front tires are doing. If you wobble the steering wheel again, the whole thing really starts to wobble and jiggle around but it never becomes upset. It is incredibly well planted, and that's the magic of this BMW air suspension system. It's adaptive, it's air height adaptive, it is load leveling, etc., and it compensates for all of those factors. Handling ability is absolutely fantastic, as is the ride quality. Handling feel, yes, you are going to find better handling feel somewhere else, which is why I'm gonna give this a regular A when it comes to handling, not an A+. You will find sharper entries out there, Actually, the Lexus LS, I think the steering feels a little bit better. It's a bit more engaging. It's easier to tell exactly what the front tires are doing, but it's not as comfortable as this. It's not as easy to live with. And this is the kind of vehicle where, aside from its enormous price tag, I could see myself being very comfortable driving this every day for hours and hours on end. When you get the 7 Series out on a rougher road like this gravel road that I'm on here, 
the air suspension really comes into its own. The ride is incredibly comfortable. It soaks up big bumps, potholes, road imperfections, these ruts in the road where water is just running down, etc. incredibly well. This is a very, very smooth, very civilized suspension. And because it's an air suspension, I can also raise the height if I'm worried about a little bit of extra ground clearance. So if you're driving this to your country estate or you live off the beaten path like I do, it's absolutely no problem. The ride quality is fantastic in here. This is absolutely an A+. Yes, it is a little boaty. Yes, it is a little bit floaty, but you'll never get seasick in this like you might in a 1970s Cadillac. In my 50 mile an hour cabin noise test, I measured 69 decibels in here, making this one of the quieter vehicles we've ever tested, but not the quietest. And interestingly enough, the X5 and X7 in certain combinations will actually be a little bit quieter than this. I think that's simply due to their design, the fact that they're slightly higher off the road, maybe a little bit more distance between the tires and the passenger compartment and the road in the passenger compartment. But for a sedan, this is absolutely fantastic. And you really won't find a quieter experience inside any of the ultra luxury brands out there like Bentley and Rolls-Royce. They're all gonna be right here around the 69 decibel mark. Fuel economy has also been pretty impressive over this last week. I've been averaging 22 and a half miles per gallon in this all wheel drive model. It is certainly more fuel efficient than an X5 or an X7. If you're in the market for a luxury vehicle and you're really torn between luxury sedan or luxury crossover, luxury crossovers have become very comfortable and very quiet, etc. But there is still something to be said for a sedan like this. It's not just going to be more fuel efficient. It's also going to be a little bit better handling. It's going to feel better out on the road. It's tuned towards the softer side of things. Even though we have more ground clearance and more suspension motion available in an X5 or an X7, they're just not as comfortable as this out on a rougher road surface or highway expansion joints, your daily commute, pothole city roads, etc. All of that is going to be much more comfortable in the 7 Series. And for some reason, I just think that there's also more of a sense of occasion in rolling up in something like this uh, versus a big crossover. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Clearly I am wrong because sales of the X5 and the X7 definitely exceed the 7 Series, especially in North America. But if you want to be a little bit different, maybe a little bit more traditional, but also perhaps I would argue a little bit more forward thinking than some of those uh, crossover shoppers, consider something like the 7 Series. It is more comfortable, it handles better, I argue it is more fun, and it's just a fantastic combination of features. If you're shopping for one of those big luxury crossovers, consider something like the 7 Series. I don't think you'll go wrong. In this video, I'm not going to bother with our usual pricing and comparison section. I just don't think it's material when we're talking about a vehicle that's well over $100,000. As equipped here, about $150,000. It started at $116,400 and then has all the options you saw on the inside added on to it. If you wanted to save a little bit, you could get very much the same experience with a lot less oomph and of course, without all wheel drive for $95,700. But honestly, if you're thinking about spending a hundred large on your next large sedan, you can afford this, you could afford the base model, you could afford an S-Class, etc. You're simply choosing because either you like the way this drives or you like the way it looks or you like the way that it makes you feel. And all of those I prefer on the 7 Series over the S-Class, the A8, the other full-size luxury sedans in the United States. I know this is controversial, but I love the way the S-Class drives. I love the fact that this feels like a big classic luxury sedan. And BMW hasn't altered the tuning much at all, or if they have at all, I haven't actually been able to determine it, versus the S-Class in Europe, which I was able to briefly ride in last year when I was there on personal travel. The 7 Series is absolutely fantastic in the ride department. Yes, it gives up some steering feel and some handling feel, but it still handles incredibly well. And to be honest, that is just fine for me when we're talking about a big luxury sedan. If you wanted something that handled better or felt better, you'd buy a BMW 5 Series or a BMW 3 Series. The entire mission of the 7 Series is to be the ultimate BMW luxury cocoon that can still carve that winding mountain road like nobody's business, but doesn't make you feel like that's going on on the inside. It is actually really insane how fast you can go in this sedan on a wide variety of road surfaces without really thinking about it because everything is so excellently done in the 7 Series. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section and would you buy this over the S-Class? For me, a lot of it comes down to the style on the outside, the style on the inside, and the infotainment system. I love the feature functionality of M-Bucks. I love that ginormous hyperscreen on the dashboard that they're offering in a variety of different models. 
but BMW's iDrive system is so much more intuitive than what we find over there, and I prefer the way CarPlay and everything else looks on the dashboard as well. I also love all the features and functions and gadgets that we have on this model. The lack of the digital rearview mirror, that is the only big bummer, and if you are debating about that enormous screen in the back, really keep that in mind. I would probably skip it because I would rather look out the back and I found that very disconcerting while driving the 7 Series. Let me know, hit that subscribe button, find us over at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those other social places, and I'll see you next week in something very different than this 7 Series. Bye for now.